Good morning, this is Robin with Art and Gifts. How are you today? Today we are going to be playing, poo, I can't talk today. Painting this cute little witch, trying to decide which broom to choose. Um, the colors we will use are black, white, orange, purple, yellow, brown, and then if you want, you could add some glitter. I found these cute little glitter sticks at the Dollar Tree, and or you can just get some like clear sparkly glitter. I also found these. It's a metallic purple and a color shift, so that might be fun on the dress too if you wanted to do that. You can make it as glitzy as you want. Then upcoming in November, we're going to be doing this, um, on Friday the 5th, we're gonna be doing this uh, Crazy Thankful pumpkin. It has uh, metallic gold. I don't know if you could see that here. The shimmer, it's really pretty. Um, very easy, just a couple colors. And then we're going to be doing a Simply Blessed sign that has a sunflower on it. And then um, we will be doing a sled. This says Comfort and Joy on it, but you could put anything you want on there. You could put your last name up there, or you could put, you know, let it snow, or anything you want. It's just a cute little sign. Then I found these at the Dollar Tree. So end of November and December, we'll probably be painting up some of these cute little wooden things found at the Dollar Tree. So go to the Dollar Tree, they have snowflakes and um, little gingerbread houses. And if you get one of those gingerbread houses quick, you can paint a haunted house on the back side of it, see? You can do a little haunted house on the back, it's fun. And then you can use it for two holidays. I love that. But today we're going to be painting this cute little witch. So I have transferred the design on there. If you would like a tracer, just uh, private message me your email or your cell phone number, and I can um, send you a color copy. The um, the diagram, the tracer, and instructions. So just a private message me that you would like that. So uh, which is be crazy is the pattern the name, and I can either um, text or email you this pattern. So we are going to start with the dress. Then we're going to do um, these two columns are black. Then we have an orange column and kind of a wood column, and then we'll continue. Now her hair is falling over the dress. I'm going to paint right over that because then the black, that, that'll cover that. So we're just going to paint that purple first. And there's a couple different purples I have here. Just use what you have. Um, any of them will work. And then we're going to do some polka dots so you can add white to the purple if you don't have a different shade of purple. I also have water. I've protected my surface, as you can tell. Thank God I protect it. Look what it would look like if I didn't. Um, I use a tray covered with tin foil for my palette, but you could use a paper plate or styrofoam plate, a meat tray. Um, whatever you happen to have. Water to rinse my brushes. And then I, I'm using a flat brush and a round brush. I actually might use this smaller brush. And we are just going to paint this Oh, I'm going to use the bigger one, sorry. I'm going to paint right over this hair. Got a goober in there. For this ruffle, I'm just going to take 
the edge of the brush and I'm going to kind of ruffle it. And then we'll know where to put the lines. Then this one is smoother. I might just re-ruffle this over that. To your dress, you can make it as roughly as you want. This is sort of transparent. We might come back with a second coat. Again, I'm just gonna kind of have my brush sideways and do some ruffles. my smaller brush and do her sleeves. I going to dry my brush. When you're rinsing your brush, really push it down at the bottom of your container to get all that paint out. Okay, now we're going to use a little black and we're going to do this column and this column. going to use a little brush to get in there. That next one is actually orange. And if you stand your um, brush almost up and down, you can get into these little cracks here. Same with the long the broom. going to go over most of the top of that broom. I'm going to leave this more delicate area showing. You can use a smaller brush if you want. If you hold your brush almost straight up and down, you can get those nice straight lines in. This is a little 8x10 canvas. You can do this bigger if you want. I think I do have a tracer for 11 by 14 If you want that, just let me know when you uh, <laughs> private message me. Okay, I'm going to turn this so it's a little easier for me to get over here. I'm going to cover up where the, the straw would be, but I'm going to leave the little detail of how it's attached. That might be harder for me to remember. straight up and down by the balloon. I'm 
think this is a three quarter inch flat. I think if you got a, a half inch, it might be a little easier for the smaller areas. And if you accidentally go over your broom, it's okay. We can go in with white, put it back in, and then do the colors. That's the beauty of acrylics. You can correct a mistake if you just let things dry. It's very easy to correct a mistake. It's actually the sideboard. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just cover that up with white. And... Oh, I missed an area. I'm gonna go back in there. The other way you can do this, if you have more time and you're just by yourself, is you can put the whole background in first and then instead of using um, dark carbon or graphite paper, use a white one. They have it in white as well, or use chalk. And then your background's in and you don't have to worry about trying to be so careful. Tiny touch of black, and the rest of it's going to be orange if I go straight down. I'm just going to put a little corner of black here. And I think the rest of that will be orange. Okay. I'm going to do the orange background now. doing the orange first because the black will easily co cover up orange if I go over the hat whereas orange black would be harder to cover up with the orange okay I need to get another bottle hold on a minute out the big guns. There we go. They do have a neon orange. That might be fun. All right, let's see. I want to really make sure I get this black out. it really well and I'm going to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze in this. Make sure I get all of that out. Pulling it flat again. I'm going to do this. Now, I can
can see that hat right through this, so I'm just going to go straight down, at least for the hat part. you can see the hat straight through that orange. Can you see that? You can see the hat. I'm going to do the same thing down here and I'll get the smaller brush for under our arms. I'm going to do the same thing here. Go right over these legs and the boots because I can see them. side of my brush and try to get around the skirt straight up and down and down straight up and down and just come down Then I'm going to use this smaller brush to get these smaller areas. Okay, now we're going to make a brown and mix it with a little white. If you have a lighter brown, use that like a tan color. But this is pretty dark. I like using these plastic palette knives to mix the colors. And I'm not going to mix it thoroughly, then it might look like there's, you know, the, the lines in a, you know, a panel. And we're going to use the same color for this and for this horizontal one. I might actually put a tiny bit of white right here, which will turn this gray if it's still wet. But that'll make it easier to cover with the brown when we get there. I messed up. There we go. Then the, the brown will cover that easier. See how the mix of colors there makes it sort of look like a board. is a little more opaque because of the white in it. So I'm not going to go over like the thing that holds the broom together so that I can still see it. White will make things a little more opaque.
we'll come back in here with the darker brown to go under and over these that board so it looks like it's on top of the other panel. Just have to be careful around here. You can use the very corner. Right up on the tip of your brush, you can get in these pretty narrow areas. Or you could go to the smaller brush. You could do that too. And I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the smaller brush. around this cat. And even with the smaller brush, I would go up and down so it still mimics the paneling, not side to side. Okay. going to paint this hat in black and her hair in black. I'm almost straight up and down to get this little curve here. With the round brush. be coming back in with purple and stuff to define this hat with some nice details. Now the hair came all the way down here. I think we can do this with the bigger brush. Let's see. It's 
It's always nice to use the biggest brush you can for an area. push these flat brushes and they can get those little uh, curves pretty nicely. Turn your palette, I mean canvas if you need to, get in there, not do weird things to your neck and back. See how I'm pushing this brush and it gets right in there? Follows that curve very nicely. black line right under these shoes. And while we have the black, we can do the cat. I'm using the little round brush for this cat. Now the tail is very skinny, so when you come out of the paint, make sure you roll the tip. You're going to be rolling the tip in your fingers to make that a nice point. Then straight up and down, you can go around this curve, the tail, and push down as it joins the body. come back in with the brown since I didn't get quite close enough and just fill in any little areas that might have missed. So I'm going to do her little black pointy shoes straight up and down again. Light pressure. Okay that what happened was my brush split so it made two lines, but we can fix it. We'll come back in with the brown. And orange, whatever colors there, I think it's brown. I don't mind making mistakes in front of you guys because then you can learn how to fix it. I don't know if you ever watched Julia Child, but she she never mind made it, making a mistake because she would show you how to fix it. If you're ever up in D.C., the Smithsonian has a uh, display of her kitchen, and I think in the American History Museum. It's really cool. Look at those little shoes in there. When that's dry, I'll go back and fix it. I'm going to get a little white. I might go over her legs.
there's a couple things you could do with her stockings. Of course, you could leave them white. You could leave them plain. Or you could um, come back in and make polka dots on them. Or stripes. Or I think in this one I did crisscrosses. Yeah, I just did crisscrosses. But you could do, um, you could use the back of your paintbrush and put polka dots in there. Or you could just do some stripes. I'll wet the tip of this a little bit. It's starting to thick. going to put some white where this broom I got to put more white out this is dried up already acrylics dry very fast that's the beauty of them but then if you're trying to blend you have to be fast or use extender I'm just going to put some white in there that we can cover it up. Let's see, this broom at the end cluster things. This went rogue on me, but I can um, come back in with the black and fix that. Also going to kind of do white where this these brushes were. Sort of base coat that. And both of these are just sort of scruffy out of control. Kind of splayed out rooms. This one is more like a house broom. All right. So the one broom is brown and it's on the brown plank. So we will be um, outlining it. make these broomsticks any color you want. You should have a pink broomstick. Wouldn't that be fun if they did some of these things in fun colors? Wouldn't be so boring when you're sweeping the kitchen or something? crazy as the others. It's more like straight across the top. I'm going to just do a little bit of black, a little kind of jaggly it at the top. Give it some definition. Okay, we're going 
going to do a few brown strokes on this one. And then it's mostly going to be yellow with some orange pops to it. The brown sort of gives it a little bit of shadowing. Same with this other one. get some white and the brown making it a lot lighter like a light tan and we're going to go back over this middle brim making some of those things a little lighter then we'll come back when that's dry with some even a lighter shade take the orange. I'm going to do some streaks of orange on this one. Am I blocking my view? Can you see? I'm going to start from the outside ones and go towards the center. Side to side, we're going to do some little things here and then down the room handle with the orange. And this is your painting, so if you would rather go down with pink or some other color, green, you are welcome to do that. Now the last brim, I tried to make it sort of look like a candy, not candy, yeah, candy corn. But I'm going to go down with the white one more time and try to make that a little more even. And we won't have to put the white stripes in, we'll just put the yellow and the orange. part up here kind of has two orange bunches and we will define this with the black that I guess is tying all this together. It's a sort of like parenthesis on either side. This one is a little narrower and this one is wider. And we could put a few orange things in here, but this one will mostly be yellow. come back in and give this middle section of her dress a second coat and I'm going to be making kind of vertical lines so that it sort of looks like it's very ruffled, pleated. And you can have the paint on sort of thick and that will help define those little pleats. Then 
then I'm going to add a little bit of white to some purple. And I want a petal because I'm going to make polka dots. And I'm going to use the back of the paintbrush for that. So I want sort of a little puddle here. And I'm going to dip my brush in there. And then on this top section, I'm going to be doing little purple dots. And I like to do things in groups of three. But you can do it any way you want. dotting, I think I'll come in with the orange and make some little dots on this brim. You could also, I know the Dollar Tree sells them in probably craft stores, but they have little, I think they're called a stylus and they, you can make really nice dots and they have them in different sizes. So we have a broom with dots. Now we're going to come back over to this broom and we are going to make all the orange stripes first and then we'll add the yellow. And I think it goes orange, yellow, white, orange, yellow, white. So we'll leave a space. It's orange, yellow, white. Now, if you hate candy corn, of course, you don't have to make it these colors. You can do any colors you want. Put more purple in there. You could have just uh, orange and white. And I'm going to come back with the yellow. your stripes wider or narrower. Be creative. And this broom is mostly yellow, so I'm going to turn this and put some yellow strokes in here. And even though this is going to be mostly orange, I'm going to come and put a couple yellows in here too. painting I had this orange here so maybe it's just a little carpet and then I had gray underneath this black line here make gray, you just mix the black and white. Okay, we're going to come back with the purple, and we're going to define these 
pleats by just adding the lines. Adding some lines in where it comes up. You can curve them a little bit. And that's just going to kind of define it a little bit more. You can do the bottom of this too. where her hemline is. There. Now for this orange broom, we're going to make some purple stripes. And I have them at a slant. them the other way. You could do a zigzag down the broom. Just please be creative. Then where this where it's kind of tied together, I did a couple purple stripes kind of arcing them up like a frown. And then an arc up here, kind of where it's all combined. You can outline that. Maybe just do a few little This broom, we're going to get some black with the round brush. We're going to twirl that really so it's very fine. And what we're going to do is some little sort of stitch marks. We're going to just kind of do some horizontal lines, kind of like it was stitched together. And if you don't want to do this with the paintbrush, you could come in with a permanent marker and do that. And then maybe just a couple, couple little lines here and there. And while we have the black, we're going to go to this far brush. And we're going to arc over here where the the broom connects, and then over here the opposite way. I'm going to outline this little area, and then two little lines here. I have too much water on this brush. I'm going to pat it on the paper towel and get some of that water out. Okay. So then this had some little um, lines, I guess, where it was sewed together. So I'm going to do a straight line in the middle, and then on the left, I'm going to curve them to the left. On the right, I'm going to curve it to the right. And same with this lower one. One down the middle, one on either side, curving in that direction. Now we don't really have anything holding these brooms up, so I want you to mix a little gray, which was the uh, black and white. And we're gonna put some little circles, kind of, um, okay, almost midway down the board. And those are like the little nails, I guess. And we're going to put a bracket across that in black. And that will hold our brooms up. And this one, I had this orange come down a little further. So I'm just going to go a little bit lower with these nails. And then I'm going to come in with the black. 
I'm going to roll that tip and I'm going to do um, almost a, a smile shape and that just a little piece of wire or something I don't know holding these things up. Kind of bracket. you to mix some brown with the black so you get a very dark brown or you could mix purple with the brown. You just want a darker brown than this. That's what we're aiming for. And we're going to go underneath this. Give it a little dimension. Do the same thing on the top. Then with that same darker brown, I'm going to go on the outside of this brown room. Kind of like it's casting a shadow or something. Find it a little bit. If your paint's dragging, you can add a drop of water, but don't add too much because otherwise it'll just uh, go everywhere. Just fill up along that. Do it up here too if you want, since it's very similar color. It's starting to rain. Well, I'm under a roof, so that's okay. The sun's still out. Maybe there'll be a rainbow. Okay. Now you can do something fun with these stockings. You could do stripes. Or you could do zigzags. Just any... I wouldn't use orange since the background's orange. I might do zigzags this time. So I'm just going to zigzag it. But you could, um, you could make X's like this one, or you could do polka dots. Be creative. All right, now we're going to have some fun with our hair. Maybe we'll define the hat first. So I want you to get a little purple. And kind of do a little purple line right where that hat edge might be. And also where the brim of the hat would hit the, uh, the part that goes up. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to that purple, like a lighter purple. I'm going to put some details. You can roll that and right at the very tip along this little curve, we can do a little fun thing and around this curve. And then uh, this is a brighter color, so we're going to go around this edge over here. Maybe on top of this other defining mark that we made and under this rim. You see, I just added some details to the hat. Then almost with pure white, even lighter, make some little uh, curved lines where this hat curves. And 
then maybe one up and down, like vertically there. And you can do some of these white where this hat, hat and the uh, make some there. And if you want, you can do it on the very outside where it meets the hair. Just for kicks and giggles, you could put a little purple in this brim if you want. I'm going to do that. I'll come back with the brown. Okay. Now, with the purple and the lighter purple, we're going to come along and we're going to make some squiggly lines down this hair. If you want her to have straight hair, you could do that too, but since it's kind of curved out, we're going to just do little squiggly lines. And we're going to make a lot of them, lots of layers of lines. And they're crossing over each other. That's fine. And then we're going to get the lighter purple and do the same thing. And this might be fun with the, if you had a purple glitter pen. as many as few as you like. And I'm using very, very light pressure. And that gives you thinner lines. Just as many or as few as you want. Just a little around this arm, so I'm going to come back in with the brown. Fix that. Down here on the floor, I missed a little. And we're going to fix this boot. I went too wide on the boot. I'm going to come in with the brown and just fix that. You see how I made it narrow again by adding the brown? I made it narrow again by adding brown. So with acrylics, it's very easy to make, fix a mistake if you just let it dry. All right, I'm gonna get some white and brown, make an even a lighter brown, maybe a tad of yellow, and come into this normal broom. with it until you get it the way you like it. That's too dark. I like it a little lighter. And this is still sort of wet. Kind of cool. Let's see there. There. I like that. Okay. I'm liking my broom. I'm liking this one. Just kind of look at your painting, and if you missed any areas or you want to uh, give something a second coat, or just add a little spice to it with a different color, now's a good time to do that. I might, hmm, I might put dots in between these little. See if I like that. Yeah, I like that. Just put a little dots here. I 
And then we want to give this little kitty some whiskers. So make sure you roll, roll, roll that straight up and down, very light pressure. Just whisk out. Touch up anywhere you might have missed. Other well, people will ask me, how long does it take you to paint something? And a lot of it is coming back in and putting in the little details. Or giving something a second coat. Or like here, I uh, thought I'd add those dots. Oh, we're gonna put a spider in. So I'm gonna make a little gray, kind of a lighter gray, with the round brush. I'm gonna roll it, make a point. And we're just gonna do, you can do a straight line. I like to do a little curvy line. And that needs to be just a touch lighter. It's a little bit dark, can't see it. What you want is contrast in these things. Just make sure there's enough contrast that you can see it. Then I'm going to go into the black. And I'm going to make a little oval. Just a little oval. And then he gets eight legs. So I'm going to do four on each side. Then I'm going to put some white on the back of my paintbrush and I'm going to make the dots like we did before for his eyes. And then we'll put some uh, black in there. And I'd have the black like have them both on the left or have them both on the right so he's looking in the same direction and I think we are basically done the only thing you need to do is put your initials or your name in there this might be a good spot in the gray I usually just do my initials. You can put your last name. You want to leave like a quarter of an inch if you're going to frame this. Like this is a panel that will need to be framed because if you don't, you're, it'll be covered up. Thank you for coming by. I hope you'll come by uh, Friday the uh, 5th. And we're going to do this crazy pumpkin. I'm going camping earlier, so that's why we're not doing it on Monday. But we'll do this fun pumpkin. It's got the metallic gold in it. Not too many colors. It looks like orange, brown, gold, green, and blue. Black. Okay, so I say black, blue, orange, gold, green. I said blue already. Green. And maybe this was... No, that looks like it was maybe some brown. So just a couple colors. I'll figure it out and I'll, I'll post it. Thank you so much for coming by. Come back on the uh, 5th and we'll do the crazy pumpkin. And then the rest of the month, it'll be on Monday, starting with the 15th. I'm going away again the week of the 8th. So I don't think I'll have internet. We're, we're camping. Um, so have a safe and wonderful day and come back on the 5th and we'll do another fun project. Thank you so much.